Welcome to this conversation that I'm about to have. Let's stand together. What up, people? Don't forget, we have our party, Club Quarantine, happening on Saturday. Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Today I'm being interviewed by Jahani, Jahani Jones. Stand together. What up, Rhea Rhea? What up, D-West? together. Oh! Donnie, what's up, man? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to do something. Fine. You know, you know what's crazy about this whole live thing? What up, Donnie? It's, it's, what's the good word, man? Hey, you know what's, you know what's crazy about IG Live? You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> what's going on with you, B? You good? Man, I can hear you. Just, just hanging. Is it, is it a little bit delayed? Yours is delayed right now. Request again, oh, and then I'll... Man. Wait, I don't know why you're delayed. Am I delayed? It might be. It might be you. I don't know. Is it, is it you? Is it me? Or do I need to talk? No, slowly? my Wi-Fi is great. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to sign in one more time. Okay, sign in one more time. All right. All right, where are you, Dahani? Come on, Dahani, where are you, bro? We need you, sir. Oh, here we go. Stand together. Let's try this. Jimmy Jam, I see you, man. I appreciate the kind words, brother. You got me now? I got you. You got me? You, you know you know what this thing is? It's like you try to use all this technology in order to make it a better scenario. Like I have my, my headset in. I'm all... I'm all ready to go. I got everything all keyed up. Hey, guess what I got for you, though? Look at this. What? Tell me. You, you, you see it in the background? You don't see it. No, I don't see it. Shout out to Jimmy Jam. Jimmy Jam. Oh, you pulled the brim out. Oh, Look, that's there the Jimmy you go. Jam. Look, that's the Jimmy Jam brew. He's the uh, brim right there. He's actually in here right now. What's up, Mike Phillips? What do, what do you think? What do you think? How I look? How do I look? You look fly, man. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm thinking about is, like, no one else can pull off a hat any longer. Like, now I can't even wear this hat anymore because it's all you. You've changed the entire game. I mean, it's like the whole world, the way that they respond to you now because of your hat and because of things that you, you've done is like one of the most powerful things. I wanna get into this interview real quick, but just a shout out, number one, Derek, thank you for doing this interview. Um, so many people have been moved by what you have been able to do. And for me, representing Stand Together, Stand Together Live, uh, this interview with you is, is incredibly um, powerful. And what we're trying to do through our interview series is just really reach into the hearts of those um, that are, are sitting at home, right, with their families. And they're just thinking to themselves, like, how am I going to get through this? What am I going to do in order to better myself once I get out of this? And how can I be motivated by amazing people uh, that are out there? And that's what Stand Together Live is all about. So for those that are tuning in right now, if you go to Stand Together, there's a lot of content out there. Again, this is uh, myself and, and, and Derek, Derek Jones, Dahani Jones. Like, we probably, we're, just, we're just probably re related. Um, probably. I agree, man. <laughs> but, uh, but, but everybody knows you, man. Um, you're that viral DJ, you know, IG Live concerts in the last two weeks. You know, I, I don't even remember who exactly just reached out to me, but – I remember when I was seeing it, it was like 20,000 people. Then, boom, 150,000 people. Oprah, Michelle Obama, um, Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, the man that owns it reaches out to you. Um, and you you went from 200,000 Instagram followers up to like 1.8, and you just keep climbing and keep climbing. So 
today we're really having a conversation about you um, and we're helping raise awareness around Give Together. Hashtag for everybody that's out there, Give Together Now. Yes. You go to www.givetogether.org. It will tell you all about how this is our COVID-19 response to helping families that are really in need. I saw a picture of people that were in food lines for about two to three miles long. People, people need money, um, but they need the, they, and they need the food. They need the, the sustenance in order to survive. And this is what Give Together Now is uh, truly all about. GiveTogetherNow.org. It's 100% of your dollars directly going to the family, uh, into the hands of the families that truly need this. And as need yes. of today, we've raised close to $15 million. $15 million, man. Fifteen, Amazing. Fifteen million, bro. So let's let let's get right into it. Um, we already talked about the hat, man. I just want to know what, how how big is your collection? Well, now, like one of my buddies, man, Jamil Spencer, sent me two new hats. People are sending hats, like sending hats every day. I'll get something. So my original collection wasn't like a, it wasn't pretty sizable. It was uh, roughly around sixteen hats. But like now, since I started doing this, probably have around twenty six hats. But 16 of them are all just, my hats are all custom made, you know, like, I need them to fit properly, you know, like, that, your hat was all over your head, man. It was Come on. <laughs> it's all right. I, look, I retired no, I'm just my messing hat with you, because I just, I just bow down. I give all No, no, no. And it's, love I'm just having you, fun with you. Look, your hat was actually per perfect, man. But, yeah, I, I just feel comfortable wearing hats when I DJ, you know, and uh, it's just been my thing, you know. Because I think when you put on that hat, in, in my mind, when I put on my helmet going into football games, you know, you just kind of cross over into sort of a whole new world, right? True. And, and it's the gift that, that you have that all of a sudden gets all of a sudden activated, right? And you have that unique gift of moving people not only through your music, um, um, but ultimately through your creativity. And, and I just want people to understand where you came from. So give a little background, some flavor, because this did, this didn't just happen overnight. This has been something in the making. It's the, it's that iceberg that most people are not able to see. Yeah. You know, since, since I remember having a conversation with a client who, you know, she called and said, Hey, my client, um, one of the, it was, it was Heineken called and asked, um, Hey, we want, we want the, the DJ D nice to DJ for us. No, the rapper D nice to DJ for us. And she was like, she called me. She was like, hey, they keep asking for this rapper to DJ. And I, I thought about it. I was like, wow, most people that hear me spin don't know my old school history. Right. A lot of people do. You know, I do have like a lot of people that have been riding with me from 1986 when I was like 15 years old doing this. But um, there are, you know, new people that just they have no idea. They only know me as a DJ. I started in 86 with a rap group. I mean, I know you know the story, but I'll, I'll, I'll share it with everyone. You know, I started with a rap group called Boogie Down Productions. We are from the Bronx. Um, DJ Scott LaRock worked at a men's shelter. Karis One actually lived in the shelter. And my cousin was a security guard at the shelter. And I brought over some food to my cousin, and then he introduced me to Scott LaRock, and Scott immediately put me in this group with KRS. And it wasn't even, like, I wish I would... I could have told you that my story was me back in, in the studio writing rhymes and hoping to get on. Like, it wasn't any of that. It was literally me being at the right place at the right time. And it's pretty much always the way my entire life has been. Like, even with, this, with the DJ now, it's always me making the right decisions at the right time to get there. You know, I started going back to uh, BDP days. You know, you know we, did, we did four albums together, and then I did two solo albums after that, you know, that was a, over a span of about six or seven years. Right. I was considered old school, which was crazy to be old school at like 24 years old. Like, <laughs> like how am I old school? I'm 24. Um, and then I, um, you know, I, I kind of, I almost want to say that I left the business, but the business actually left me, you know, like mm. it, it had shifted, you know, you had different, different, the sound of hip hop had changed, you know, like coming in from the eighties, we had a very specific sound with, with our group. You know, we, we talked about, you know, politics and, you know, on my personal records, I talked about having fun. But like 92, 93 with like, you know, new style of rappers coming in and the Pox and the Bigs and, you know, like everything has shifted. And, you know, I was kind of like the odd man out. I wasn't a part of anyone's clique. So that was it for me, you know, like I, I fell back from music 
and uh, was out of the music business for roughly uh, roughly seven or eight years. I returned as a, a web developer with my buddy, Tony Rasson. We started a company. Actually, he started the company called Trendsetters, and I became a partner. Did that with him for about a year and left and then started my own company called United Camps. And we did online marketing and um, web development for everyone from Reebok to, you know, all of the record companies. I built the Alicia Keys site, a diary of Alicia Keys. I built Annie Lennox site, Luther Vandross, Boys and Men, you know, Mario's first site, you know, and I, I had deals with J Records and Arista and all these cool record companies. And, um, and you know, after doing that for a number of years, I I don't I was invited even during that time I wasn't I wasn't going out to parties, but Q Tip had invited me to like a party where he was playing and it was like Q Tip and Mark Ronson. And they were playing at a, a, a spot in New York City called Table Fifty. And it was a very small kind of downtown cool spot. And I went there and I couldn't believe the music that they were playing. Like they were playing like classic beats. Like Tip was in his his soul vibe, you know, like in the middle of the right. party, like no one was playing deep James Brown cuts, but Q-Tip, you know, and then Mark Ronson would get on and Mark would play like brand Nubians, like the cool hip hop, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, right. And I just stood there and um, and, and from that point, from that moment, uh, I just, I remember going home two o'clock in the morning, I called my buddy, God was dead, my man Chris Lighty, rest in peace. I called him and I told him that, I was like, I think, I was like, I really want a DJ, bro. Like, I think that there's something special there for me. And his advice to me was, yo, be, be sure that's what you want to do because these people, they're animals now. It's not the same business that you were in when you were rapping. Right. And I just knew that I wanted to do it. You know, like, it didn't matter. And I did it. And I was literally making, I would DJ for six hours for $150, bro. Like, you couldn't even get me to rap back in a day for that. But I just felt Man. like I wanted to DJ. And the first DJ that really like came through and the kind of co DJ with me was uh, DJ Scratch, uh, formerly of EPMD, but mm. DJ Scratch, legendary Take in his back. own right. But he was the dude that just came through to help me out. And then, you know, I, I did the, you know, a lot of people think my old school history is what helped catapult me into like being this kind of like in demand DJ. But it had nothing to do with that. I really did put the work in, you know, like no one wanted to hire me based on like my old school history. So I had to reinvent myself, which was already easy for me anyway, because one, I did it as a web developer. I never told people who I was. Two, it was just, I mean, I knew how to build my own website. So I knew how to market myself. Right. Um, so I had like an unfair advantage when it, when it came to like marketing, because that's what I was doing for other people. And I just applied all of that to myself and totally left my web development business just to focus on DJing. And that's what I did. And then while DJing, I went to school for photography because I also wanted to document this new journey that I was on. And I always wanted to carry cameras with me and, and to be able to one day tell this story the way I'm telling you. Man, it, you just you just took me through like the ultimate time warp. Um, you did the did the cover for Luther, Mario. I mean, that's bringing things back and, 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 and tip. I mean, being in New York City at that time, there, there were so many things that were happening. Um, big shout out to Ed Reed, who's who's on, in the room right now. Big shout out to um, Coltrane Curtis, my boy. Coltrane, what up, man? I know you know Coltrane. There's a lot of people in this room that, that just want to hear your story, and there's a lot of people out there that are, that are that are in need. And and one of the things I want to talk about is you know being as a DJ. I just want to throw this out. It, throw this out there because I know you have that unique gift um, is being able to think on your feet. So I'm just going to, I want to do something a little bit different because oh, man, you kind of gave people a little bit of background of your story. I think we're still good. I think we, we, we lost a little bit. We back up. Uh, you back up. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, you know, dealing, dealing with bandwidth is a, is a thing out here. There's so many people in school. Um, but one <laughs> of the things that uh, I know as you as a DJ you always have to think on your feet. And I just want people to kind of get a little bit of a, a flavor of, of, of that unique <laughs> gift. And so I'm going to throw out, a, I'm a, we, I've created my own set list through Stand Together, right? Five, it's, you know, five words and numbers, phrases. I'll, I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind. So kind of like I'm throwing out a record and okay. you, you're going to tell me kind of what that's going to make, pe pe make people feel, all right? The pressure, so the pressure. All right, so... I'm the DJ, I'm spinning the records, you know, <sighs> all right. 
hundred thousand, the number a hundred thousand. What's that? What's that song making you feel? A hundred thousand people rocking right now. What song would I play for a hundred thousand people? Well, the hundred thousand people that were in a room last week, you know, me, I'm old school. You know what I mean? So like, I would, I would. Gosh, it, it would have to be a Prince record. And, and this is what happened when, when Michelle Obama stepped into, into the live chat where I got stuck. Like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to play for? What am I going to play for? 100,000 100, people. I was personally feeling emotional because at that time, no one had reached 100,000 people in, like, one live chat like that. Um, so I think I may have thrown on, like, a Prince record or something. I don't even remember. But, like, right now, if it happened, I would throw on, like, Dove's Cry because that just – I was very emotional, man. I was very emotional. So, yes, yes, I would probably throw that on right now. And by the way, I got Prince's old school album with all of the archived music. I got it all, all on wax, so it's sitting in, in my living room right now. All right, the next, the next uh, group, the next phrase is community. Oh, man. Uh, man, community. Uh, let me think. I don't know why Fly, uh, Sly and the Family Stone is coming to mind. Okay. Um, I would do like um, everyday people, the Fly, uh, Fly, uh, Sly and the Family Stone. I don't know why I keep wanting to say fly. I'm so hip hop, man. <laughs> fly in the family song. <laughs> All right. Because the fact that, you know, and, and I even, you know, as I was looking through some of the photographs that you had done, you know, I've, I've done photography as well. And I understand completely how you kind of live in these, these sub worlds where people don't even understand the other part, right? So if you're in, if you're baked into photography, a lot of people don't even know that you're a part of music because those two worlds don't mix. And that's one of the great things about you is the fact that you've been able to transcend so many different aspects of life that people are able to see you in different different environments. And then it, it'd be funny when the person that you did the photography for shows up to the DJ set and you're like, oh, that was the guy that took my picture. So the next word is photography. Oh my gosh, a song that would, <laughs> photography? <laughs> I don't see. I wouldn't even play this song right now, but it's the one song that's coming to mind would be like the Outcast record, only because he's like shaking like a Polaroid picture. Oh, I like it. <laughs> that comes right. to mind. Like, all right, two more, two more, and then we're gonna get some more questions. And because I, I want you to just really expound upon yeah. a lot. Well, of your people. buddy's in here, man. Oh, Spice, Spice? Spice. Spice is in here. What up, Spice Adams? What's up, Spice? And and for everybody out there, Spice is gonna come on the show too and really drop some knowledge about his background, his family, and his inspiration around creativity. I know the two of you um, know each other because I know he was in he was in club quarantine, dancing. Um, he's got an amazing story. But here, two, two more, two right, more cool. words. Two one is trending. Give me the song. Which one? Trending. Trending? Oh, my gosh. gosh oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to pause real quick. I got to pause real quick. Vanessa Williams is in the room. Vanessa Williams is in the room. What up, Ness? Oh, okay. All right. Moving wrong. Moving wrong. Go ahead. <laughs> Trending. Trending. Gosh, what's the Drake record that everyone's dancing to? Because it's like I'm sick of hearing this record on Which the TikTok one? songs. I can't. That's all I can think of, man. I don't know. You give it. I don't think about trending when I'm oh, DJing. Okay. Bro. All right. All right. All right. It doesn't last, even flow with music. All right. Last. Last word. Toilet paper. <laughs> Shake your ass. Watch yourself. <laughs> Wait, what's what's his name? Uh, what's the rapper's name? Uh, Mystical. Mystical. <laughs> Tell me All what right. you're working with. Look, that was that was just a little bit of fun, just to kind of cut up a little bit. Uh, no, I love you, brother. No, and and I and I and I appreciate it. Um, and and part of what we think about from Stand Together is um, being able to help other people succeed. And I think, um, you know. You don't, you don't have those playlists as you talk about all the time for Club Quarantine, uh, but you do have for, for live shows. How do you begin, and this is where I wanted to kind of get into the bulk of this interview. How, how, do, you, how do you begin to design a set, right? When, you, when you're about to set up, you know, for everybody out there, um, we're helping raise money for Give Together Now, givetogethernow.org. Um, for those that are out there that want to be like you, right? Um, that want to be a DJ, that want to take their creative level, the creative expertise to the next level. How, how do you how do you begin to design a set and feel out the crowd? The the thing about it is this: like one, every DJ is very unique. There are some fantastic DJs that I've been following throughout Instagram Live, 
So after I did it for like a few days, you know, I, I, I decided to take a break just so I could support other DJs. So I can go into like their chat rooms and like just kind of big them up to say like, yo, we're all doing this together for, for the right cause. Mm. And the beauty of it is everyone's unique. You know, like my style is very unique for me. I don't really have a set. I, I play music based on who's in front of me. It was initially, I thought it was going to be challenging because I'm doing it at home in the kitchen, you know, like there's no one in front of me. I don't have a screen in front of me. Like, you know, I can't see anyone. But the beauty that I found in doing it that way was that you are getting 100% of who I am. Like you're getting me because right. I'm not paying attention to your body language. I'm actually playing music that I feel is, is just good music, whether it's old, whether it's new, you know, like I, I like to blend everything. I like people to feel a little bit of everything. I tend to lean more towards old school because I like the disco vibe. I like the 80s vibe. It just feels good and you want to dance and it's a good tempo to dance to. And then I go into my 90s set. But for the most part, it's you're getting 100% who I am. And, and there, I have no set. That's why I was able to play. All of the sets that I played have been different. You know, like right. the, Sunday night, I, I just jumped on because... I was here alone and bored and I did a slow song set that was just probably my best set because it was just fun. And it, you know, just imagine three o'clock in the morning and there's still like 15,000 people in there listening to you play slow songs and just having a good time. Um, so it's all different. It's just, just based on a feeling, you know, like I don't know how anyone else DJs, and, you know, but I will tell like any DJ that's trying to, any, any person that's beginning to DJ, you should definitely play from your heart. You know, like you want people to love you for who you are and how you play music. Is that how you found your sound? Um, being able to kind of DJ from the heart or, or where, did, where did you find it? I found my sound. There was a constant battle between wanting to make money and then wanting to DJ because you love music. I always wanted, I had to find the balance because obviously I have kids. I mean, I'm keeping it real with you. Like I have kids and I, I do want to be able to pay my bills and like, yes, and play great music. So I always had to find the balance between those two things. And I realized that those worlds could coexist, but you have to find the right way to do it. The way that I look at it now, like I went in there because no one wanted to hire me because they thought that all I was going to do was play old school music. So I taught myself how to play new music, even though it wasn't something that I was listening to. I just learned to play new music and learn to understand it. Then, um, once I became a little bit more popular and I started to do more, mainly like private events, I learned to infuse more of who I am into my set and to still get people some of what they, what they love. You know, I mean, I happen to love Rihanna. I love Rihanna's records. I love Beyonce. I love, you know, I love, I love Drake. I love the new records, but I like to put old school in there because I have to be my authentic self. Then we started doing parties with you know, with some of my boys, um, we call the parties the originals, and right. we play nothing but classic beats, like just classic everything, break beats, reggae, Latin music, and that's when I learned, like, man, people really do want DJs to play. They come to see you. There are parties that you go to, and they have like big clubs in Vegas that you will go to that mainly want you to play like top forty and EDM, and that's right. cool. That's what their business is based on, you know, like. But like now, after the world was able to see me play the kind of set that I would prefer to play, which is mainly old school and infuse it with some new records as opposed to new records and, and infuse that with old school, I feel like I can just be me now. You know, like I can play what I love and that people will gravitate towards it. And it's proven, like, obviously people, you know, like people are at home and the numbers are showing that this is what people are into, and uh, at least for me. So I would tell any other DJ to just find your true self with, with music and play what you love. And, and, um, you know, and that's it. Don't try to be in, I can't do what Clark Kent is doing, nor could I do what DJ Spade is doing, you know, or, you know, I just, I have to just be me and, and, and people respect me for that. Yeah. And I definitely respect you because of it and everybody else in this room and everybody across the world respects you because of it, because of it. And they love you because of it. Um, it's, there's been some hard times for so many people that are out there and, givetogethernow.org puts money in the hands of those that, that need it. And I know there was a question out there from Lady T228 um, who was asking a question, um, who directly is giving money to the people 
and is the organization helping people in a certain location or everywhere? And I just wanted to make sure I threw this out there um, directly. The dollars being raised by Give Together Now, www.givetogethernow.org, are being distributed by a network of trusted nonprofits, okay? All across the country, which are listed on the website here, www.givetogethernow.org slash eligibility, right? right? Um, this is directly from the Stand Together team. and. This amazing nonprofit um, is really bringing together people um, and distributing capital to those that are in need, putting money in the hands of people um, that need it. So, and speaking of communities, um, we're at the best when we lift, lift each other up. And um, people have posted and shared about how being part of your experience essentially changed their, their life, even Scarface. <laughs> Scarface. Yes. Right, Scarface, who has been battling COVID nineteen, even spoke about how you saved him. Um, just simple question, like why? Why is doing this so important? And and tell us about that four a.m. moment. And then, if you could back up to a couple of days before that four a.m. moment, and then how things transpired, and then how you and why you helped people. So I don't, you know, a lot of people have been attempting to credit me with like being one of the first people to DJ online. I'm not, I'm not, you know, there are so many DJs that have done it before me. The thing about it was they, I just happened to like, I did it at the right time when unfortunately we're all at home and we're all like, you know, we're all quarantined and I'm here at home. You know, I've been like, you know, self isolating for like, and you know, I'm not sick or anything, but I, I just try to respect everyone else, you know, like I don't want to get out there and spread anything or catch anything and then spread it. So I decided to stay home and, um, you know, I couldn't make it to Detroit to see my daughter and I was extremely frustrated that I couldn't be out there with her. But I also didn't want to go out there because I had been traveling for like, I mean, I'm on a plane all the time. I did 400,000 miles last year. So there's no telling what I could have had, you know, like just from traveling. Yeah. So I decided to stay here in um in in los angeles and i was i was frustrated you know like i was frustrated i was angry i woke up one morning i was i mean i was really upset bro that i wasn't with my family and it was kind yeah. of a situation of like man you spend all of this time doing things for other people and you end up alone and um i was frustrated and then there was this calming feeling that came over me that where it, it, the universe was on some like just telling me like be still like, just be still. And my whole life changed because I was able to just be still and find some peace with just being here alone. I, I didn't have the television on. I didn't have anything on. I, you know, I was going to read a book, and then I, was, I didn't want to do that. All I wanted to do was to play music. The two things that I loved the most were I had no access to. I didn't have access to my family physically, mm -hmm. but, you know, of course, FaceTime. And I didn't have access to the gigs that we were all losing like all djs like like my brothers in music like we all we've all lost so many gigs and you know when you do something that you love and then it's like removed from you unexpectedly what do you do so i decided to um i was like hey i'm just gonna go in and i mentioned this to some friends like the day before when we when i knew the quarantine was gonna happen i was like you know i'll just sign online and just maybe i'll just interview people like us what we're doing now i just want to talk to people <laughs> Um, Should have reached out. Yeah, but but then I decided to play music and tell stories, and I did it the first day with I had no gear hooked up. I just sat at the counter here in the kitchen and put my phone on my computer, played songs, and then I would play a song that I produced, and then I would tell the story, like the back end story behind it, and um, and I did that the first day. But then it was like two hundred of my friends in it. Like I literally knew everyone in my IG, <laughs> like every one of us. Meanwhile, I'm telling these stories. But they were in the chat room pretending to be in a club, to be in club quarantine. They, you right. know, like, and that was fun. It was, it was like I would tell these stories. But meanwhile, my man James Lopez was like, yo, I'm sending a bottle of the D at the DJ booth. Or like Blue Williams was like, <laughs> yo, everybody needs to tip the DJ. Spice Adams or my, my boy Black Thought from the Roots and his wife and like Bun B. I don't I don't, I don't ever want to take the credit for even the success that I've had like with this because it wasn't just based on me. It was based on this community that all came together 
yeah, they were in my IG live, but we came together to do this. Like we came, we were all isolated and we were all like away from each other. And we just came together and started talking to each other and um, in this IG live and it was great. And it inspired me to want to do it again. And the next day I did it. Then the, the third day I called up DJ Clark Kent and we were talking and Clark Kent said to me, he's like, bro, I was like, Clark, I think this is something. I don't know what it is. Like it, it could be a show or whatever, but it just feels good. And Clark said, you should actually start DJing because I wasn't DJing. I was literally just hitting play. And I went to, I went and bought like, because my turntables, my, my turntables are here. Well, you know, my techniques, but my mixer was like an old rain mixer that couldn't connect to the new Serato software. So I just went, bought a new controller and just came back, came back home, connected it. And man, we turned it into a party. And that Friday night was insane. <laughs> like 20, we went from like 200 people to like where it was like 20,000, which actually represents more than that because it's, if you have a consistent 20,000, that means you have like 100,000 people that was in and out because people were in and out of the chat room. And then um, that night, it just kept going and, and it was growing and then Drake popped in and then J-Lo popped in. Woo! And it was like, whoa. And then I saw like, I read these comments that, you know, it was like, oh, D-Nice has all his friends coming. Like, John Legend popped on. We did like a split screen, and I did a split screen with Dave Chappelle, with Big Daddy Kane, with with um, Eric Sermon. We were just having fun, and but I saw like it, it, it from reading what people were saying, they felt inspired because a lot of people were home. This was in the beginning of the quarantine. People didn't know what to do, and um, you know the very next day, I just started calling some of my friends, you know, and I, I would call my friends and. I didn't put any pressure on anyone. We would have regular conversation. And then at the end, I would ask, like, hey, do you think this person could pop in? Like, just for some inspiration. And initially, right. it, was, it was kind of hard to, like, explain what that, what that chat, what that room was. Hey, what's up, Melba Moore? Love you. It was difficult to say, hey, can the biggest political figure in the world come and join me in an IG chat? No one was really doing IG chats like this. So that thing was de definitely different. And um, man, that night, that Saturday night, when it all happened, yes, it was very emotional. It was emotional because initially when we all signed in, like my friends, we were so used to signing in and it was like 200 to 300 of us, where mm -hmm. when we first signed in, it was like 10,000 in the first two minutes. Then it was like 20,000. And we we're like, wait, what's going on here? <laughs> like, we all felt that way. Like Kelly Rowland and Latoya Luckett and Luda, like we were all pushing each other because it started as this small little group of like entertainers and like entertainment execs and, you know, Spice Adams and, you know, like it, we were, it was just a small group of us. And to see that that number reached, you know, as high as it did at, you know, at the time and, um, you know, with a hundred thousand people just partying and dancing and it, it remained that way though, you know, you probably had people, hit a number, but our thing stayed at like 100,000. It kind of fluctuated between like 90 and 100 for like hours. And Oprah coming in and Gail and The Rock and like Ellen DeGeneres posted it on her IG. Like, you need to go over there. Mark Zuckerberg was like, he was in there. Like, you know, when we when we reached like 98,000, I was screaming into the phone like, Mark, don't, don't let him cut us off. Like, we need 100,000, Mark, we need 100,000. <laughs> And then Mark posted, he was like, you got this. And then once it like reached 100,000, it was, it was just amazing because I, I knew at the time, like, and especially that day, no one had done that, you know. I think Drake, Drake just broke the record last night because he's Drake. Drake, and, uh, and, uh, he, he did like 300,000 people last night. But he's Drake. <laughs> yeah, no, and and I and I, look, we had we had Cortez Bryant or Tez Bryant on Stand Together Live, just just interviewing a couple days ago, and he's the one that founded Drake, and you know he cares a, a lot about this as well. But what do you, what do you think? What do you think about being in that room in Club Quarantine makes people feel so connected? Like what what is it about that room that makes people want to order drinks from their own bar? and give shout outs to people that they haven't seen in a long time, but now all of a sudden they're all rallied around you. So I think the beauty of that room and, and the way we work that room still is that we treat everyone with respect. You know, look, I'm excited when I see a celebrity come in because I want the, the average person who works the nine to five that, that listens to Rihanna to know, hey, Rihanna's in here. Like, because I want them to know that like, 
we're all in the same chat together, you know? So I always shout out like the regular person. I mean, I don't want to even say regular, like the person that's not in the music industry or not in the entertainment industry. It could be a lawyer, it could be, you know, the housekeeper, it could be the nurse, whatever. But we're all in this thing together and to see familiar names and familiar faces that are popping in with inspirational words of like, hey, like we're here together, like let's stay together, like let's inspire everyone to be great. That's the beauty of the room. It's, you know, initially when I started, when I did it the first day, it was very self-serving. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was lonely and I went into this chat room. It was my chat room. I didn't start another chat room and put a different name. No, it was D-Nice. And I went in there, it was very self-serving. And the moment that I saw that it became inspirational, it was like, man, this is actually something cool. And I'm learned, I learned in that moment that I wasn't the only person feeling that way, that felt a little lonely or a little down. Yeah. And it, be, it no longer became about me. It became about what can we do for all the other people that are feeling this way. So if being in a room with Black Thought is gonna inspire the young rap dude that just happens to be in this room. He's like, yo, Black Thought is in here. <laughs> like, that's super dope, man. Like, that's inspirational for someone that, and that, that, that keeps people smiling. And that, to me, is the difference between what, what I'm doing and, and this is by no means, I mean, no disrespect to any other person or any other DJ or talent. I try to acknowledge everyone. I can't say every name. Like, clearly, I can't spend time screaming out 100,000 names. I can't do that. But, like, I do try to like balance it out and make everyone feel inclusive. Well, I know you did give me a shout out in there. So I, I, I appreciate that. And I know that everybody else appreciates just the love, man. And I think um, during this time when people are at home, they can feel that. And they can feel that from Club Quarantine. They can feel that um, in the music that you play. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there at home, you know, that they have a passion uh, for music. Wait, hold on, you know, hold on. Lamont, I see you, man. What's up, Lamont? <laughs> we got some cool people in here right now, man. <laughs> people are hanging out, man. People, people love to D hear. Todd, I see you, D Todd. People, what up, people love to hear from you, man. <laughs> All right, so look, you know what can people do during social distance, distancing to kind of work on their gift as a as a DJ? Because you know you brought people together. I'd imagine there's going to be other people out there, as you already know, that are DJing that are trying to bring people together as well. So what what can people do to work on their gift? I mean, I can't, because that would be telling someone to be like me, and I don't want to do that, you know? Like, I would just, I would, the only thing I would say to, like, a lot of DJs that I've seen when I go into their live sets is that they don't normally acknowledge just people, Got you know? It. Like, then that's almost like just listening to the radio. Like, you, you don't want to do that. Like, the fun of going to clubs, you know, is that you get to acknowledge the people that are in the room. So unfortunately that we, we, we're being quarantined, you can't see the people that are in the room from across the room because you're in your own place. So it kind of helps when like wh wh whoever is DJing can just say like, hey, I see you, John. Like, I'm glad you're here. I because, see Vanessa Williams giving the shout out. Thank you. Yeah, you know, like people come in. Listen, man, there was a day that, that, that made me, that actually made me laugh hard, but it, I knew that I had the real support of like Black Thought and Bun B. And it was like maybe day two or three. And somebody said something. I was like, man, Black Thought is Black Thought was in here for hours and always in here. I'm surprised he's not here. And then <laughs> one minute later he was like, yo, I am here. And that man literally, listen, man, when they're at the end of the day, when we because you know, we'll probably do a documentary on all of this. I have to do it with Black Thought and I have to do it with Bun B. Like that's real. Because we did we kind of even though I was DJing, they were the ones that were like telling their friends to come in. They were in there with me. We played so much, we just played music and we had fun, just fun banter in the, in the chat. And that's what makes our whole situation different. Like when artists come in and they feel, they feel at home and they also feel at home with the person that's not an artist. What's up, Renee, don't play? You know, like, but we all, we all communicated with each other, you know, and, and it just, it just feels like love when we when we're in there and like and another thing that's beautiful is that when people post videos after the fact they're posting videos where they're connecting like they're connecting their phones to like their their sono systems you know right. I, I spoke to stan lathan earlier today and stan told me he was like he was like dude i listen to when you dj we listen as a family 
Like we plug it into the house system and we listen to it and we just jam out and we cook dinner. And I see that a lot from people. So that's why I tend to tend to stay to more of like, I don't want to say family friendly, but just a fun vibe, man. Like where you can dance with your two year old or, you know, your grandmother can walk into the room and listen to it and be like, damn, is he, is he playing Sister Sledge? <laughs> is he, you hey, know? I'll tell you this. Um, the, the most amazing moment was when Chaka Khan jumped into the room and you just started playing her music. Oh. I, I love that moment. I think I just, I probably did a backflip off the couch. But real quick, because I know we're, we're about to run out of time. Um, you know, beyond donations and staying home and social distancing, um, uh, what can we do? Uh, what can all of us, you know, and I, and I want to get into a couple questions. What can we all do um, at, in, this, in these few moments to, to get through? What, what can we all do? I mean, I don't really have the answers to that. I just know what I've been doing, you know. I've been doing multiple things, like, um, in terms of, like, giving back and, like... Jay Ivy, what's up? <laughs> donating to um, different organizations, you know. Um, I'm working on something now that, that we're going to announce on Saturday just um, in terms of, like, fundraising with uh with another huge with well not another i'm not a huge celebrity but with a huge oh, celebrity. yes you are yes you are don't be shy <laughs> with you know just working on something that we're going to announce on saturday i'm working with the mayor of los angeles he's going to jump on my ig live before i dj on saturday just to talk to the people to talk about what's going on you know i'm going to work on something with with my guy michael blake who used to be a part of the obama administration to talk about what's going on in the bronx like we're from the bronx and i want to make sure my people in new york are straight as well um and the, and the whole global thing, like, I'm trying to be more involved, which is why I tend to, like, even when you came to me with this, I'm like, I'm in. Like, I just want to be a part of something that's going to help up, uplift people. Then on the other side, like, when we're just dealing with that and, like, people on the front line, there are also people who, you know, I would never say names, but I would just say I've been trying to contribute to as many people as possible because yeah. there are people that have worked in the clubs, you know, like just from my industry that worked in the clubs, there were DJs that were opening DJs that made $200 a night. You know, like I try to do what I can to to help them. You know, like people have families. And we're, when, we, when we say like we're all in this together, we truly are all in this together. You know, like people have lost jobs, can't go to work, there are no checks coming in, some on furlough, like you still have bills to pay. Like I talked to someone recently like that didn't have money for – next month's rent, you know, and don't have the ability to get out and work. So I just want to make sure that, that whatever I'm doing is, is, is it, I'm spreading the love across the board. You know, like I want to help people well, and inspire well, people. And that's why this music, the music that I play is so important. Like I could, I can go on IG live and play aggressive hip hop, or we can play something that's going to make people feel differently and think differently and think positively to bring positive, you know, energy into their lives. And that's what I choose to do. April Romay, big shout out. Melba Moore, uh, big shout out four time Grammy nominee and Tony winner. I mean, there's so many people in this in this room. Remember, uh, Ed Reed, Coltrane Curtis is in the room. I mean, there's, there's so many people and there's so many nuggets that you've given us. And I know we're, we're out of time. Um, I just want to give everybody a heads up. Look, we've raised 14.5 million for a gift together. 14.5, bro. We're going to keep it climbing. You and I are going to continue to talk even I, – I hope you allow me to interview again because there's so much more to unpack. But everybody go to givetogethernow.org. Um, help us raise some more money. I just want to let everybody know we're going we're gonna to keep this Stand Together Live going. Our next episode is going to be Thursday. This Thursday. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's going to be Friday, April 3rd, 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central with Sean Johnson East. She's an Olympian. Um, she's an amazing woman, a, a mother. Um, Derek, DJ, D Nice. Um, you know, we were both born to DJ. You know that, right? That's right. You said, look, you said three things teach, teach people re with respect. Absolutely. Um, um, you, t you said, teach people with, re with respect, um, do things for other people, and you said, be still. Be right? still. Um, be be still, still. Being still, like, has been the greatest lesson that I've learned. I, I literally have been traveling for the last, like, so I started like really DJing. Um, this is, forget about the rap career. 
2004 was when it started to take off. In 2007, it really popped. So just imagine from, say, from 2007 all the way until now. So you're looking at roughly like 13 years of traveling. I did like 400,000 yep. miles last year. I didn't know what it meant to be still. Being still in this moment taught me so much about my own life and about like other opportunities to help people and to share these stories just because I, I'm still right now. It was forced. It's not something that I wanted to do, but like now that I am in this position, it's the greatest thing that's happened to me is just being still and just allowing the, the blessings in the universe to just find you. And you know, it's just been great, man. And I, I want to continue having these conversations. I really do want to talk to you more because I want to hear your story and how you've been doing. Look, I'm an open book. I can't wait to talk to you more. I appreciate it. Um, I hope everybody got something out of this. Love and respect to everybody. Club Quarantine, Derek Jones, D Nice. I appreciate that. I'm out. Appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you for being here, people. Thank you, everybody.